start my Okay, hi there. My name is Renee Hobbs and um, welcome to tonight's class, Digital Authorship 534. It's um, April 3rd already and we are steaming toward the last month of class. Um, I'm here with the amazing students of um, EDC 534. Most of these students are enrolled in the uh, digital graduate certificate in digital literacy. We've opened registration for the 20, uh, the 2017 program. Uh, today you might have gotten a um, email from me about our announcement. We're so thrilled that Dan Gilmore is going to be joining us. He's a very distinguished uh, journalist and uh, Silicon Valley uh, reporter uh, and a critic, a critic of the um, social media industry, but he's really insightful about um, the questions about the transformation of uh, journalism, information, assessing credibility, how do we know what we know, how do we decide what to believe in, and he's going to uh, give our keynote address on Wednesday, so we're pretty excited about that. He's the guy who organized the Facebook uh, Meets the News Literacy uh, meeting of a couple of weeks ago that I went to and talked to you guys about in Arizona. Um, his insight on how social media is changing the nature of news and journalism, it's powerful stuff. So uh, let's just do a little thumbs up. Are you coming to the Summer Institute this summer? Awesome! I plan to. Happy, happy, happy. Registration's uh, now open. Uh, it's for sure gonna sell out in um, by June. So uh, hopefully you guys will be, uh, be part of that. Some of you are coming back for the second time for the leadership tier. Some of you are coming for the first time. It should be awesome. Um, okay, so I'm, um, I'm sharing my screen with you uh, only to talk a little bit about um, you know, sort of some of the things that I want to just uh, review before we before we go too much further. I did get a chance to look at the warm and full and cool feedback that you gave um, to the um, to the the teen boys from Thurston High School who did their uh, rap video, and I was really pleased to see. Uh, the quality of this. I saw evidence that you were deconstructing and analyzing the student work. I saw evidence that you were offering uh, cool feedback that will, could help the boys to revise and improve this work. And I saw evidence of sympathetic, warm feedback that really um, made efforts to make a, an uh, emotional connection to the challenge of creative expression. So I was I was pleased to see the quality of the different kind of feedback that you offered. Um, and I also was really intrigued at the way you offered feedback on the Highgate School lesson. This is, I believe, the first time this semester that we, um, we used the YouTube comment thread, right? So, um, and truthfully, the YouTube comment thread is a new tool for me uh, to use. And so I think it has some interesting uh, pros and cons. One thing going for it, of course, is that it's, it's beautiful, right? It's an attractive interface. Uh, so I enjoyed responding to uh, some of the comments you made um, about that teacher, um, that teacher lesson. And of course, learning to observe um, teacher, teachers' activities and comment on them is really important um, skill of becoming a reflective practitioner, but kind of hard to do in a piece like this that's already pretty heavily edited and leaves out a lot of information. Um, and finally, I want to make some comments on your tweets on the readings. Oh, how wonderful. So um, I really appreciated the, um, the uh, energy you put into uh, sharing a little bit about your Leap 4 experience, which we'll talk about in a minute or so, um, and uh, designing. So cool, so many of you designed images to 
go along or selected images to go along with your um, with the with the tweets you posted so right now if you will return to our class page and click on this link here where it says your tweets about the reading what I'd like you to do is review this list of um, the latest tweets and then select one that you think is especially I don't know strong a good tweet what makes a great tweet so scroll down the list for about we'll give you about two minutes and find a great tweet or at least a good tweet from this list and then be prepared to tell me what you like about it all right give me a thumbs up if you understand what we're doing beautiful okay let's let's look at them Just take about one more minute. Okay, looks like you have had um, if you looks like you've had some opportunity to scroll through the Twitter list and uh, offer uh, now we are going to invite you to offer a comment on one tweet that you find particularly um, provocative, important, well formed. Um, I'm going to call on three people and I'm going to ask you to share your screen and point to the tweet that you're talking about as you explain uh, what you like about it. Who wants to go first? There's so many good tweets. Vanessa. Hello. Um, so I just clicked down here for share screen, yeah. right? Okay. Okay. So um, if everyone can see it, I want to talk about Mary's tweet with a GIF. Um, I love the use of GIFs all the time, anytime. I feel like they're appropriate for any occasion. I love them. Um, and this one was particularly fun. Um, and I didn't, I read the Hub, your article. Mm -hmm. So it was interesting to read someone um, else's take on something that I didn't read. And it, um, it was a good, you know, a good summarization and the GIF was great. And then also something I'm finding challenging with tweeting is uh, using shorthand uh, to fit everything that I want to fit. Uh, and I think Mary did a great job sh 
you know, summarizing it, condensing it down, using shorthand and abbreviations to get her point across. So I, I love this gif. I, it really, really stood out to me when I was looking through them. I thank you for sharing. That was an outstanding analysis, and I think you hit a lot of bases with your insight. Um, Mary uses shorthand. She uses author date citation, but boy, that School of Rock gif, it totally nails the point um, and adds a lot of appeal. Thanks for sharing, uh, Vanessa. Uh, okay, so we have two more to choose. Good, good tweets that we like a lot. Lourdes, share one with us and tell us what you like about it. Can you hear me? Yep. Can you see what I'm pointing at? Yeah. Okay. I chose Vanessa actually because I felt like she used a, you know, an image and kind of wrapped it into that, but I thought that was really a smart idea and I kind of found it very creative and used it myself. So I, I thought that was a, a good way to kind of incorporate more information than Twitter sometimes lets us do. So I thought it was kind of a creative way to include everything. But I also specifically liked her tweet because I connected with it. It was personal. Taking risk is always scary, but strategically taking risk can make can have a positive influence on education and personal lives. And I connected with that. It was a comment or a commentary on the quote itself. Yeah. I, oh, thank you. Thank you for sharing. This was an excellent uh, tweet. And I think that that first line, taking risks is always scary, is what grabs our attention, right? And then we see that it's really about risk taking in the education context, right? And then the more academic quote, right, from the article. Uh, so it's really underlining um, that unpredictable social interactions actually are like strengthening your muscles, you know, you're learning, you're, you're being a good, being a human being muscles. And that's part of school too. Nice. Thanks for sharing. That was an excellent uh, selection. Well, I'll hear from one more student. Is there one more uh, person who will share um, a tweet that you liked? Winnie, I see your hand is raised. Yes. Um, so we'll un Lourdes yeah. will unshare your so screen. While the other participant in the sharing. Okay. So she has to unshare. She's gonna unshare. Before I can share. Have you figured out how to do that? Uh, she, she has oh, you can go up there and requ request remote control too. I think that works as well. Let's mm -hmm. see if that works. Uh, remote control. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm I'm controlling your screen and now I'm controlling your screen and now can I can I give up the remote control? No. How do I uh uh Lourdes, how do you how do you let's see, how do you uh get out of your um for me it was at the top of this very top of the screen. The very if that's helpful. Lourdes, do you see up at the top of the screen how you can stop sharing? Yeah. Ah, you did. Oh, Perfect. Okay. All right, now it's your turn. Winnie. Now Winnie's uh, going to take control of the screen. You can see all kinds of uses of this technology, can't you, pedagogically? So exciting. Share your screen. Down at the bottom, have you found it? Oh, share screen. Share screen. Yep. Beautiful. Okay. Okay. But they're sticking to the video. Hmm. Why am I not scrolling down? And now, uh, participant 12. it might be that you're sharing a different window because this doesn't have a Twitter screen in it. Check and see, unshare, and then as you reshare, you get to choose which window you want to share. Okay. Okay. So, 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 um, Me on unshare. Yep. Okay. And stop sharing, I guess. Share. Beautiful. Right. Mm -hmm. And now when you share the screen, notice which uh, of the, you probably have a, like, if you're like me, like I have seven windows open at any one time. Let's see if this one, it watch this time. 
uh, I feel like for a cool. Is this good? Is this good? Okay, you share. Hold on. No, so so yeah, so maybe uh, what's behind there? Okay, what I have here is mute, stop video participants. Let me see if that. Hold on, let's see if that is that me. No. Hmm. So you're seeing I something. Have mute, stop video participant, new share, pause. Uh, what else? Ah, ah well so, 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 so not to worry so you you can stop sharing your screen and we'll um but what i wanted to share is christine b um, Beatty's tweet. oh yeah so which one is that which christine bd one is that it's the one hold on is that happening no i'm sharing now to find Andrew, it yeah the one that uh the one that she tweeted about every um local encounter about an encounters and i wanted to let me just close this so i can see what you're doing yeah keep going i'm going up or down uh you're going up you're you're good keep going i think it's up there no oh okay then it's down sorry mm -hmm. i don't know why i couldn't get this okay. up there's one but it's not the same one that's christy sharing her hit record okay keep going okay keep down. going aha yes every social encounter yes children are empowered as letters ah uh, yeah what okay. do you like yeah. this yeah yes i like her the, the way she tweets you know um it's very eye-catching it's very uh substantiated like you could look at it and tell it has that feel of um of a headliner, mm -hmm. it has the feel of a headliner. So you're able to catch exactly what she's saying without pretty much reading through the, the tweet. So I like that. Yeah. And I'm also particularly drawn in uh, children that are empowered as learners and develop a sense of social responsibility when given the opportunity to analyze and represent what they're encountering in the environment. This is particularly dear to me because I'm a very proponent of children taking responsibilities or being responsible, you know, with social media. Mm -hmm. So I like that tweet. I like her style. And um, it, it's very prominent. You know, uh, the visual context of it is very, um, um, very directing and very inviting at the same time. Nice. Thank you for sharing. So it is really true that this idea of choosing uh, a, a quote, figuring out how to make a connection to it, uh, represent your way of understanding it. Um, we're still, I feel like we're, st I'm still experimenting with how to effectively use uh, tweets to summarize and to analyze and to represent ideas. But I really appreciated how you tried to do it um, with this activity. Um, okay, so let's turn our attention to another topic, which is I want to hear a little bit about your Leap 4 experience with Hit Record. Now, thank goodness, your Leap 4 is not due until tomorrow. Yes, that's right. If you haven't uh, submitted it yet, that's cool, because it's not due until tomorrow. But some of you have started playing around with Leap 4, and you've invited us to do things like share a photo from our favorite country, or explain how we're feeling in one word, or write a six-word poem. So you have been inviting us uh, to participate in the uh, Leap through uh, 2, but just where you stand right now, share a highlight and a low light of this crazy, weird online creative community. Such a strange assignment that I made you participate in this crazy, weird online community. What did you love about it? What did you hate about it? So I could go. Um, what I really loved was kind of the um, simplicity of how um, you can kind of get into it. So 
what I saw it was that like there were people who were novices in the work that they were creating and there were people who were masters in the work that they were creating. But overall they were creating together and they were commenting together. Um, so it was this very um, supportive environment, I felt like. It was peers like say what you could do and then more experienced learners kind of give you more professional tips on how to promote yourself. Um, one of the things I didn't like though was the organization of it. And I think that's more or less just the preference that I have right now and how I perceived it to be as a social media site. Um, it was very much so like, this is the stuff that is, um, you have already like subscribed to, this is the stuff that you want to work on right now. And then this is the stuff that you can explore. Whereas like in normal social media, it's, you see everything, whether or not you subscribe to it or not. So just having that like, oh, I'm working on this stuff or I want to work on this stuff. And yeah, I could explore here yet like anything that I've posted or has been remixed by me is here. Like that was just a little bit of a take back. I can definitely see how it'll work in the future if people keep going with it. Yeah. Dan, I really appreciate your comment about the way that the community levels the playing field between the beginner and the expert. That's a big insight. And I also think I wondered when I was looking at the design of the, the site, if that's how they were sort of like focusing your attention, you know, but you're right. In a way, it maybe overstructures your attention, maybe. Um, but it, it is curious why they did organize it that way. And I, I wondered about what the alternate possibilities were like, or maybe had they experimented with other designs in the past, I didn't know. But I'm glad you noticed that particular structure as uh, you felt it was limiting, I guess. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Other reflections on what was your Leap 4 experience like? What did you love about playing in, I gave you permission to play and create. What did you love about that? And what well, did you hate about it? I can go ahead and go. Um, I think initially, and I, I put some of this in my blog, I kind of looked at it as like, you know, what am I doing here? Um, what do I have to contribute? Uh, you know, almost like a, you know, I'm, I'm not an artist like their artists. Um, but then once you started looking at people's work, and, and this could be a positive and a negative, you just got sucked in. You just kept going and going and going. And, and like Dan said, I think some of the structure of it is, you'd find something, but then getting back to it was a little difficult to, to navigate. Um, but, but other than that, I think that's a positive and a negative. But then once you, you started playing in it, and it was, it, it became play. It wasn't, it wasn't like it was a, a task after you, after you got started. Um, you started to realize the, the, the beauty of it. And, and I, and I th start, cause I started to think this, you know, Joe maybe created it for his own intents and purposes. Um, so he could gather more media, you know, for his own uses. But then I think it may have morphed into something even bigger than, than he truly imagined. So um, it's kind of my take. Cool. Thanks for sharing. That's awesome. And I appreciate your kind of uh, making some critical analysis of the issue of like, how did this thing evolve and for what purposes and has mm -hmm. it transformed over time from the uh, creator's original purpose? Uh, Kristen, I saw your hand was raised. What did what you love and hate about participating in the uh, hit record community? Yeah, I loved this assignment. Um, so at first I was so apprehensive because uh, I guess like Mary said, I'm not an artist. So I was running around with my, I downloaded the app, which made it a lot easier for me to um, kind of go mobile with it. And I was taking pictures all around my house, um, we involved my little son and you know, we're all just having a good time with it. But I found I truly related to the audience problem after I started posting. I'm like, is anybody going to look at this stuff? What do they think about it? Um, and I got a little nervous about it. But then when I started getting a little, um, like, people promoting um, your work, you know, it just kind of, it motivated you even more to contribute. And so then I posted my own challenge. And I have no idea what I'm going to do with this challenge. But people, I have, like, seven responses. I'm like, this is pretty cool. So... Nice. So
So you were, so you found the motivational experience empowering enough to uh, not just participate in other people's play, but to start a game of your own. I'm very, very pleased. I'm looking forward to reading your uh, Leap Four experiences. It's not, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting thing to return. We're returning this at the end of the semester, almost to where we, where we started by thinking about creativity and expression and the relationship between creativity and learning. Um, so I thought before we get into the mess, those three articles I invited you to read last week were about like the unexpected, the unpredictability, the weirdness of what can happen when you give kids permission to bring their playful selves into the learning process. But before we do that, I thought we should view and discuss this interesting little video called What is Art For? Okay, so at this point, we're gonna watch this five minute video. You'll also find it, if you aren't finding it uh, here, you'll find it at the, um, you'll find, oh, sorry, let me pause that. You're going to find that at the bottom of your screen. It's five minutes and 53 seconds. First, we're going to watch it. We'll watch it privately, individually, as we always do. And then we're going to talk about it. And if we can make connections backwards to our leap four, uh, backwards to our messy engagement, backwards to the audience problem, backwards even back to the beginning of this class. We'll see whether it makes sense or not. So this is a peculiar guy, Alan de Botan. He runs a organization called The School for Life. And this five minute uh, video is called What is Art For? Uh, so at this point, it would be a really good idea to mute your microphone. You may even want to stop your video. We'll return back to the class in five minutes and 53 seconds to discuss this short video. Thumbs up if you uh, you get what we're doing now. All right, we'll see you in six minutes.
Okay, give me a thumbs up if you're back from watching that. Okay, almost everybody is back. Um, okay, we're so we're we're trying to uh, wrap our heads around what are what's the argument here? What's he claiming, and how does it relate to what you experienced with Hit Record and what we've been exploring in this class, and what might be some of the tensions or contradictions? between the ideas presented here and what we've been exploring. Who wants to go first? Vanessa. Um, so one thing that really stood out to me is that he seemed to be only um, showing paintings and then maybe like a sculpture or two and not just paintings, but kind of older paintings and from rather famous artists. Uh, and he talks a lot about how art is um, to sort of balancing out media and uh, advertisements and popular culture, but we've talked a lot about how using pop popular culture uh, can actually help creativity uh, and sort of energize people to create things. Uh, so I thought that was sort of interesting that uh, he was saying it's the opposite of that, or it's to balance out that, but really the idea is that we're trying to use that as a, a sort of jumping off point, right, for, for people who are new to creations and creating. Wow. Yeah, he, he's definitely stuck in the, uh, oh, the, the, the hierarchical, uh, high culture is better, popular culture is bad. And we spent the whole semester <laughs> making the opposite argument. So intriguing. Other connections you can make. What's the connections between some of the ideas presented in this little video and what we've been talking about all semester, what you've been experiencing in this class as a digital author yourself? Um, I'll go ahead and speak about the actual, the first one about it, keeping up, keeping us hopeful and its prettiness. Whereas a lot of the media we've kind of encouraged with our students is, you know, to share their voice, to get down, to get grimy and get gritty, you know, and, and I think that's where, you know, that's in, in the video, um, where the, the African-American gentleman went into the um, art gallery, she was kind of looking for that same griminess, but he was, he was kind of ambivalent because he wanted to show images of, um, you know, family and, and, and what he sees, you know, as, as hopeful. Um, but yet we're, we're looking for things. That's what, um, that kind of show the opposite and we're actually trying to help our kids you know share that voice and as uncomfortable as it can be as as ugly even um, as it can be to, to hear what kids really have to say about you know civic engagement right now um, he's saying no don't do that let's be let's be all rainbows and butterflies and happy and pretty so and I, I don't think it can always be that way yeah, a great observation. And the example that you used, we saw how, you know, there is a genuine optimism and then, and yet at the same time, there is pain, there is mm -hmm. uh, discomfort, there is the grittiness uh, and that dialectic between wanting to create things that transform our experience or really represent it the way, mm -hmm. we, way, way we really experience it. Uh, that's a tension. Uh, that we've explored. Good job. Who else has got another connection? What connection can you make between this crazy little animated video about the purpose of art and how you've been thinking about creativity and authorship this semester? What you experienced playing around as an artist yourself this week? I wonder what you think of the idea that art is a form of propaganda. <laughs> is he right about that or is that a crazy idea? When people make things to express their values, is that, is that kind of like propaganda? Yeah, any, any method or ways you could use to express communication can be a, a form of art, you know, whether by a picture, whether it's with a propaganda, whether it's with 
Fake news, alternative news, right? You know, um, in this case, there seem to be a lot of expressions, you know, facial hand gestures and pictures that were used. And uh, yeah, so so to, so to consider art as propaganda is also to take us back to that issue of it might be propaganda if it reaches an audience. Right. It might be propaganda, but in order for us to determine that, we'll have to ask, does it reach an audience? Um, cool. All right. So our last uh, conversation of the night. So we're kind of moving through a series of provocations or ways to strategies. I'm trying to get you to make some synthesis or connections between the different parts of the course, because that's what you're going to be doing for your your final multimedia reflection. You're going to be seeing if you can synthesize and make connections as you review the syllabus and you think about the uh, ideas and that you encountered that were meaningful to you. Um, last week, we took a deep dive in thinking about messy engagement. And um, so what I thought we should do is we should have a little bit of a small group discussion about some of these questions and then come back to uh, share some ideas as a large group. So I'm going to uh, break you up into a group where you work with a partner this time. Um, you are free to discuss uh, just one, I think, or maybe two of these questions. Uh, first, uh, what makes it difficult to bring children's media into the classroom? How might students respond to an activity to critically analyze gender stereotypes in popular music. Students might respond in different ways. What are some of those different ways? Why is parody an attracting and yet challenging form for students? Play can be powerful and yet problematic in education. If we know exactly where play is leading or how it will end up, it is no longer play says Ellsworth. How might teachers manage this unpredictability? Uh, when student digital authorship reinforces um, gender stereotypes and inequalities, how should teachers react when students create media that reinforces them? And what are the opportunities and risks of the teachable moment? And What's fun about transgressing boundaries of political correctness? And what should be the limits of student empowerment slash transgression? And maybe the most important question, what kind of transgression and messy engagement do you want to see in your classroom? What kind would you prefer to avoid? All right, that's gonna give you a lot of things to talk about. You can choose any one. Here are the breakout rooms. We are going to break into uh, five groups, two or three people in each one. I'm gonna ask you to have a conversation about one or two of those questions for just about five or six minutes. And then as you're participating in the discussion, you're gonna be trying, notating, trying to identify a key idea or two that emerges from your conversation that you're willing to share with the whole group. Give me a thumbs up if you understand what we're doing next. We got about six minutes for very fascinating discussion. Breakout rooms are open.
Back. <laughs> okay, looks like you are all we're almost back. The groups are still uh, coming back together. So we'll just give them a minute or two still, 24 seconds. All right, so it's got to seem pretty complicated to, uh, you know, come as we come to the end of the semester to get into the, the weeds about the complexity of, um, you know, the complexity of letting students be powerful, engage, to make choices, make good choices, make bad choices, engage in the creative process of the opposite. Um, there are uh, unintended and sometimes negative consequences. So there were five breakout groups. Let me hear from each group about what question you started with and one key idea that emerged from your dialogue. Who wants to go first? Can, go first. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So we talked about the last question. What kind of uh, transgression and mass engagement do you want to see in your classroom? What kind would you prefer to avoid? So we talk uh, in our classes, we see sometimes we show videos or uh, play music to the students, but a lot of time the students take, don't take what we are doing seriously. So they think we are having fun time, we are having entertainment, so they don't pay attention. Also, uh, 
if it is we use this media to uh, to 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 show in the class, we have to do a lot of uh, um, research about this video so that we can answer all the questions. It is a lot of uh, a lot of I mean research beforehand, and also um, and if we want to do it su successfully, we should identify clearly the instructional purpose so that the students know what we are going to talk about after the video. So it's, uh, it's challenging. And then, yeah, it's hard to avoid uh, these problems. <laughs> but, the, but those are some strategies for minimizing the risk. So that's yeah, boring. that's good. Uh, group two, what was, a key, what was one key idea that, you know, captured your attention as you walked through this discussion? Um, I think that's us, right? <laughs> um, so we talked about the first question um, about what makes it difficult to bring students' media into the classroom. Um, we thought the biggest idea that came out of it um, from the Buckingham reading was that um, teachers are trying to tell students to be creative but do it on our terms. So, you know, you want, you want the students to, you know, be part of this pop culture and you want them to be, you know, expressing themselves, but then you give them all this kind of freedom and then all of a sudden they want to read it back and say, well, that's not, they're censoring it. They're saying, well, this isn't appropriate for school. So we want to give you the freedom, but we can't do it and we have to constrain it. So um, it definitely makes it hard with the, those boundaries between the teacher and the student and what's appropriate for school and, but giving, but still giving them that freedom to express themselves. Well, Olivia, you have really nailed a key idea uh, from the readings this week. It is a paradox, isn't it? Right, that as much as we want to give students uh, creative freedom, uh, we need to, we somehow, it has to be on our terms, right? And we can easily freak out when they're, they're when they take seriously the idea of um, uh, that freedom of expression. And um, it's a chat, it's a, ch it, cha it challenges us. And the, all, the readings give us a sense of how freaky it can feel like in David Buckingham's case, to have those girls make a slut mapolitan, you know, <laughs> I mean, that's, that must have been scary for that teacher. Um, and yet um, the paradoxes of um, having to tow the political correctness line can be equally as deadening and, and teach exactly the wrong kind of lesson to students as well. So, uh, Donna. A key idea that emerged from your team's discussion. Um, we, building on what Olivia said, we did the same, we did the same question with what makes it difficult to bring media into the classroom. And it's not just the teacher um, previewing the videos and that kind of thing, but it's also, since I work as a technology coach, I'm the liaison between the teachers and the, and the technology department and so there are times when I have to say uh, we can't unblock that for you or this is unacceptable because of the you know the the well-meaning internet protection acts from Congress and so sometimes that limits what teachers are allowed to bring into the classroom right so this question of the role of filtering and each community makes its own decisions in this country each community makes its own decisions about what and how to filter but those decisions are based on a school district and uh, community standards and that i'm you're putting a larger community context so it isn't just about the teacher and the kid it's in the context of the whole school community that these decisions get made excellent uh, let me hear from group four. What key idea animated your discussion that was, uh, you know, provocative or interesting or shareable? That would be better. Um, we addressed the um, question number six, which is the risks and rewards of uh, a teachable moment. Mm. And I kind of specifically talked about how much time you give into a teachable moment and um, the effect that has on the students. So um, uh, Kristen brought in the readings from your um, 
text and your daughter's um, work at the summer camp with the homeless um, lesson. And I kind of addressed, well, if she didn't have that much time and kind of free range to address these issues, then what would be made of it? What if she just kind of threw it off? Like these are two homeless people. The first one is like going through the second one's stuff. Like how would the kids go through it? And what are there then like future notions about people who are homeless going to be? Yeah, so that issue of time and uh, thinking through the consequences of taking the time and the consequences of not taking the time. That's a nice way to frame it, Dan. It's really true. We saw in the piece the consequences of taking the time were a 14-page comic on homelessness, and and that's kind of cool. But there are also consequences to not taking the time, and that might be uh, promoting stereotypes and continued misunderstanding. What a great observation. Cool. All right, let me hear from the last team. Team five, what key idea emerged from your conversation? Uh, That was Mary and me. We didn't actually address any of the questions. We both just sort of shared experiences. So Mary recently um, had students, they were talking about fracking and methane gas, and she had students who wanted to talk about cows farting. And... (laughs) And then in my experience was as a student, my senior year in high school, we were doing Chaucer and the Canterbury Tales and my partner and I had to um, write a, you know, a short poem about a well-known popular character. So we chose Miss Piggy and we had this line and it was, um, and with a bod like Kermit's and a tongue so long, plus he orally expresses his love through song. And uh, it was sort of this, but we had talked, all right, I'm going to fed myself here. We had talked a lot about the sexuality of Chaucer stuff. We were seniors. It was our last semester. We just went for it, I guess. Um, and we sort of got a little slap on the wrist for it. But um, one thing that stood out to me is that I remember Chaucer and I remember the Canterbury Tales because of that experience. You you wrote. Yes. Yes. I have it memorized in my, yes, exactly. Um, and the, the cows farting is what engaged Mary's students. So it's, it's a definitely a hard line to walk because um, it's, you want them to be engaged. You want your students to be engaged and um, to find something that relates to them or that they find engaging. Uh, but then at the same time, you know, you're talking about cows farting in class. And so it is, it's a fine line to walk, definitely. I have to, I, let me clarify just a second. <laughs> We weren't just talking about, they were creating video. We were creating a video conference that they had to actually create small videos within to share it out to other classrooms. And it was about fracking. And they actually titled their um, conference Passing Gas Marcellus Style. And so that's that's where this, and, and when when I wouldn't let them do the whole video about methane gas and cows farting, they, they, they accused me of extreme censorship mm-hmm. and then so they came up with another and I still have this video they came up with what they called the methane mamba and they instead wanted to blow something up in the chemistry lab and I let them do that and they had and they videotaped it so so I, I, I gave a little bit you know in, in both ways but, but the beauty of that was um, the, the gentleman who kind of took charge of this group um, became valedictorian in 12th grade, and he actually shouted out his experiences through, of creating these videos um, with me and, and, and honored me within, it, within his, um, his speech. So, he knew it was um, a powerful learning experience. He knew he, it was a powerful yeah. learning experience. Yes. It was that negotiation. That was a place of learning for him that yes, you let him mm-hmm. live his way a little bit and yet you held some boundaries and that negotiation was really insightful. That actually probably ignited his curiosity and helped him understand about like in the real world. Right. Right. So yeah. probably built yeah. some maturity, right, as well. Oh, wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. You guys are fascinating. I could talk all night with you about this stuff, but guess what? Uh, it's 7.59, so here's what's next. Now, you'll notice not much on the classroom activities because this week you are focusing 
on your EDC 534 final project, you remember that you are doing a project worth 400 points. You can do a research paper, you can do a creative project, you can do a curriculum project, or option four, the world is your oyster, right? Um, most of you have sent me uh, e uh, an, a, an email telling me what you think you wanna be working on. This week you should plan to spend nine hours, right? on your final project. As you do that, you might want to review the learning outcomes for the course, also take a look at the criteria for evaluation that's uh, listed on that page. Um, and I'm going to be available this week for uh, Twitter or phone chat, uh, actually over the next two weeks. All you have to do is tweet me saying, I'm interested in uh, a consultation, are you available on Wednesday? We'll, I'll tweet back and give you some time choices. If you want to have a, like a brainstorm session as you start developing your ideas. The, um, the final project is really a chance for you to um, develop something, uh, create something, explore some set of ideas that are gonna be professionally and personally meaningful to you as you advance your expertise in digital literacy. That's kind of the point, right? Uh, you're not just taking what Renee Hobbs is uh, uh, giving you, you're striking out on your own and doing something original and smart and creative, and it's your, it's your show here. Um, okay, so you can see what's coming up. We've got the next set of deadlines, really the reflective multimedia essay. It's a perfect, it's a perfect activity to be doing this coming up week as you start working on your final project because it'll help you, the experience of writing that will actually help you connect the dots between what are the big ideas I want to explore in my final paper or project or whatever, and then what are the ideas that I've been fueled that have fueled my uh, curiosity and that have helped me develop my ideas. Um, so I think that's good. Next week, I'll talk a little bit more. N next week, I'll ask you to kind of report a little bit on what you think you're working on, right? That'd be good. And then we'll also talk more about making an Ignite screencast. So at each step of the process here in the next month, the main focus of your work is on this piece of small, small piece of original work. If you guys have questions, you know what the best way to reach me is, right? What is the best way to reach me if you have questions? Twitter. That's right, that's right. Um, so uh, why don't we do, why don't we do the, um, why don't we do the goodbye uh, uh, handshake, but I need somebody who's gonna lead it this week. Winnie, you look like you're up for it, are you ready? Yes. Winnie, you're gonna lead us in a cheer. What's our, what's, you do the motion and we'll do it. Like this. All right. We're slicing it down with EDC. Yay! Karate chop. Good night. Good night and good night with the karate chop. We'll, we'll be contacting you, you this week. Next Monday. Yeah. Thanks a lot for joining me tonight. Um, Thank you. Thank you. you guys rock. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, Renee. See you next.